Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, world. Good morning, the people that are out there that are still trusting in Jesus and putting their lives in the hands of God for salvation. Um, I wanted to catch up with some of you people and update you with what's going on here with me. Just woke up this morning. It's about six o'clock, and I have to make my bed and talk to you at the same time. Um, if I take too much time, if I take too much time talking, um, if I take too much time talking, I'm not going to get this done. So I have to do both um, and see if I can keep you up to date with what's going on with me. Um, I guess basically uh, nothing has changed um, with the with the D. Franklin and his mother um, sexual uh, assaults. It's still on a nightly basis. Uh, they're still coming in here. They came in here last night, the night before, and the night before. Um, here are three incident reports. This was the uh, incident number eight right here. Number eight. I don't know if you can see it. Fully full page description. Here's uh, number nine. And here's number ten. Okay. So I'm still dealing with these people here at the apartment complex. Nothing has changed at all. Uh, they're still trespassing, coming in, and assaulting me. They're still doing, um, still sticking needles in my body, giving my, uh, giving me pain shots, um, coming in here and, and sabotaging my property, sticking needles under my nails, um, still following me from place to place. Um, I recently went to Portland Christian Center a couple, uh, I think it was last week, to look for a job, maybe in ministry, but they removed the church and put in the gay clan. And when I got there, um, on the intercom was the voice of Gabriel Franklin. The front desk woman was wearing an orange outfit to represent Gabriel Franklin. And um, it, it seems like it was everybody that was there. It was to moral support for this old Haitian woman who was probably representing John MacArthur. And um, when I had, you know, after talking to the man, of course, he lied to me from beginning to end about who he was. And I mean, it was so obvious, you know, if I hadn't read into his shirt, you know, sex queer, you, you're a Ron Ernst. And if I hadn't read into the orange and heard Gabriel's voice on the intercom, um, you know, I had to terminate my connection with them as a community. I didn't really know them. I wasn't a member of the congregation, but as a result of them, you know, when I finally, I, I, I told the guy, I don't want nothing to do with this, with, with the gay clan. I don't want anything to do with, uh, with their community in, 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 the, in the congregation, the body of Christ, right? And I asked them several times if that was the body of Christ, if they were the church. Um, and of course, I told them that I wanted to separate, um, the, you know, the, you know, what, you know, render to Caesar what is Caesar and render to God what is God's. I'm dealing with homosexuals. And what comes with homosexuality? I mean, do I need to describe it? Right? Do I need to give you details as to what comes with homosexuality? Okay. Um, and what these people are doing to my life outside of the congregation and, of course, what... Um, was going on in the congregation. It seems as if they have no control over um, the government or the gay community or the clan that comes inside and infiltrates and takes over the entire establishment. The esta he, you know, what I was told was that the establishment belongs to the church, but I don't believe that there's a church there. I believe that there's a, there's three white crosses, you know, all white. And so that, to me, that was like, that was a clan. But I wanted a, a different answer. I wanted a I wanted to know who the people who actually loved and served, um, you know, Jesus was, but I never met them. And so I, I walked away after the conversation. Um, the concert tickets that I had, I returned them. The information that I had taken, the application, I returned the whole thing. And I felt that I was insulted because when I had asked the man about the voices, you know, the voice of Gabriel Franklin that kept on coming out on the intercom at least five or six times. He's like, 
I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't hear anything. I was so hurt by that. The fact that the man couldn't even tell me to my face the truth about, you know, either what they were, what was going on on the establishment or what the church was suffering or who they really were, you know, and, and I, I sort of walked away. I mean, it's bad enough that it's in my life now, right? I mean, it's in my life. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't do anything about what they're doing here. I mean, the incident reports don't accomplish nothing. Police reports don't accomplish nothing. Um, even talking to, um, you know, the, 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 the government don't accomplish nothing. Um, and so these people are free to sin, you know, free to sin, free to violate, um, free to sin, free to violate people's constitutional rights, free to rape, free to molest, free to beat, stick needles under your feet, stick needles on top of your feet, uh, fuck you, rape you, beat you, murder you, chop off your hair, put holes in your property. I mean, you know, they do what they want when they want, and it's like there's no government, there's no righteous government to put an end to this shit, right? Or to put an end to what they're doing. Um, I'm still being stalked and followed into places. Yesterday I went to, um, I went to the movies, um, and uh, they were kind, and they gave me a discount, or maybe I just showed up at the right time, I'm not exactly sure what, but, um, went to the movies, when I came out, went to one of their local restaurants, and when I got there, um, it's like, I, I feel like I was dealing with Guy Franklin, right, but through the community, not directly, um, through white men who are his, you know, who has the same height, face, as he does, you know, and, um, and, 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 of course, I, as I walked in there, you know, Melinda tells me, you know, I don't trust these guys, you know, be careful. Uh, I was warned three three times. I was going to go to two different restaurants, and the first restaurant, she told me, if you go into that restaurant, they're going to cut the, the food in half. They're going to give half to um, Guy's mother, and the other half they're going to give to you, because that's how they've been treating me as if I'm part of their family. I'm a Duke Laurent. I'm not a Franklin. I have no part in the Franklin family. I have no idea who they are. You understand what I'm saying? And you Americans are making an error in taking their position as if I have an obligation to these people at the age of 44. I have no obligation to the Franklin and as, as family. Now, if they're your slaves, um, if they're under, uh, if they're slaves under MacArthur or slaves under uh, Bush, Obama, Clinton and those people, then it's a different situation. And I don't think I should be involved because I have nothing to do with these people. But from what I can see here, um, these people are under the gun and they're also exercising the freedom and, and the liberty that's being given to them by, the, by, this, by your, your gay clan community, right? Um, this woman comes in here freely. Somebody climbs through that window right there. They climb through the window. If you, if you, if you, if you see this right here, this is, this is the odd thing, is that this window here, it opens here at the bottom, right? It opens this way. Somebody has to be pretty skinny to pop this out, right? I'm not sure how they pop it out. I've tried to pop it out. You know, somebody has to pop this here, right? And um, climb through. Climb through, right? And then come, come in, into, the, into the kitchen here to see how, how do you open the door from the back, from the outside? Right? If you have the keys, how do you, um, the, the kitchen door is blocked. Right? So then somebody, because they can't, I won't show you, but because of the fact that I blocked the kitchen door from the inside, and, you know, it has, somebody has to climb through here, seven stories up from the roof, come down to pop the door open for an old, for an old, for his old mother to come in here and for him to come in here. Right? Right now, as I'm talking to you, my hands are in pain because she sticks needles in my hands and she sticks needles in my feet um, and she sticks needles on my thighs, right, on my legs um, and on my buttocks um, to give me pain shots so that my penis can grow and she can use me. Um, I'm completely against what I'm saying to you. I hate these people. You understand what I'm saying? They're not, they're nobody that I want to be in association with. So looking at the window here, seven stories up, right? and it would have been worse if it was three or four stories, right? Because these people have the tendency to constantly, frequently visit this apartment. You understand? To the point where the neighbors, the neighbors don't say anything anymore. So that means that the government is behind this. If one neighbor is watching these people climb through the window on a nightly basis, even the children are aware of what's going on. 
they see it from a distance. People climbing through the window to come into this apartment. So that's why it's a nationwide hit. In other words, nobody has any complaints. This John MacArthur and his staff, this is what he does to men to diminish them, right? To diminish them. This isn't a form of this isn't a form of church discipline because I didn't do anything to the MacArthur family or to the people in his community. So this thing here that he's done, you understand, this is how the clan has continued their reign. Of course, I will show you some of the other positions that I've taken um, in regards to exposing their butt and their cocks, um, talking against them and bringing out the fact that that's who they are. In a sense, so there's like a, there's two sides of me. One side of me where I have to deal with my own Christian faith and deal with who I am. And there's the other side of me where I have to deal with them and their sin. And I have to completely yield, you understand, completely yield to them as if I was one of them. And, you know, the word of the Lord gives us a warning, you know, to become all things to all men. You know, yesterday I, I stayed home. I didn't go to church. Today is Monday. On the 23rd, I didn't go to church today. Uh, uh, yesterday, I couldn't. I got all dressed up and and ready to go, and um, and I couldn't. The Lord would not allow me, so I stayed home and and I prayed. I think it was like 6:30 in the morning when I woke up, all you know, in pain. I mean, from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, I was in pain. My cock was in pain. My arms, my legs, um, was in pain because she came in here again because they opened the door. You see. This morning I wrote down on the incident report. This is like a, ch a challenge to my authority to see whether or not I'm gonna. It's it's one of you know it's one of these to see if I'm gonna do something, you know. And it's the clan that comes out like that. You know, they're 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 immature white males who feel empowered to control and to challenge my control. And um, they've taken the position of the Franklin family. And it's it's not men who have authority. It's not men who are respected. It's not men who are loved by the people. It's white hooded homosexuals with no life and who are looking for um, who are looking for fear in African men. Um, they're not men of respect, you know, that it's not a congressman that's climbing through a window. It's probably a homeless or a loser or somebody from the army, you know, I, I don't know, or the police department. But it, it, it's somebody that has no life and no respect from the American people. It's not somebody that has life and respect. It can't be. You know, if you're a respectable person, why would you climb through a window? So they probably got a scumbag to come and do the, their filthy work for them in case something happens. You know, they fall through the window and they break their neck or something. And so, you know, you, you have people in this land who who does things like this, you know, and, and it's to challenge my authority and to see what I'm going to do. But how can I challenge, how can I respond when I don't know who's, who's I, I'm drugged, I'm gassed to sleep. I have no idea who, who's climbing in and out of the apartment. Um, I recently purchased another or new um, video because I went to um, one of their stores and um, they played. I didn't. Um, they came out. I didn't. Um, and the end result was, you know what? Before somebody gets hurt and killed, I'll just, I'll just buy, I'll just buy some food at uh, Don Pedro, the the Mexican place where I eat. After I I make contact with them, um, and um, even them, they they began to change. It, it was interesting. I went to their restaurant the last time I went to their restaurant. They, um, they um, they did something that that they normally wouldn't. They made the food and they put the food down. But they were told by the clan not to feed me the food. And I thought, well, that's peculiar. I, I've never had any trouble with them. And they left the food there on the counter to get cold. Um, and they usually serve me hot food, tacos. Um, and a family came in and, and laying a tongue. They all ordered tongue, tongue tacos. And um, I usually get the carne asada tacos. And so they came in and they sat down. And they they came in, they ordered, got their food. But the, this big family, at least like four kids and, and a husband and a wife. And I'm standing there looking at this stuff and they got served before I did. Whereas all it, all the food is already prepared. All they have to do is just hand me the food and, and I would have been done, sat down and eaten and gone. But it took too long. And when I saw that the other family came in and got served, I, I became alarmed and I thought, what the hell is this? What's going on here? You know? And um, they lost respect. That's what it was. The Hispanics lost respect for me for having made contact with the whites 
whether blacks or Spanish or the Asians, Mexicans, whoever it is that's over there and comes over. They always get somehow or another somebody's reporting to the to the to the restaurant what's going on over there. Right? And so when I come, they know that the only reason why I come to their their restaurant is to redeem the fact that I just make contact with these people. And sometimes I don't make contact. And and, and I just come in, order the food and and leave. Just because I went in there. You know what I mean? And the and the exposure of flesh in my face, I just you know, I, I don't want I don't want any anything to follow me home so I, I, I eat food and then I leave you know it's sort of like a fast food place that's the only reason why I go in there so anyway they get their food I didn't and um, when I noticed that the the spirit and the temperature changed and the fact that the clan had control over these people behind the counter I thought huh this isn't good because they've been wanting me to, to cross over to an American restaurant across the street that's under construction and um, what Melinda told me was that there was a hit there waiting for me. So I'm like, well, I don't want the hit that's over there, and um, nor do I want any trouble with this restaurant, right? And so, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking, how do I do this, you know? So I had the receipt in my pocket and the change. I had like, uh, I had ordered a meal. And, um, and when I saw their spirit and how it changed against me and how there was a conspiracy to put me behind um, the family and it wasn't even behind the family another guy came in a third person comes in ordered their food got he got his food <laughs> before I did too and then they, they they served me so I was number three third I was one and I was reduced down to number three which is basically what's going on here in my life right um, I, I'm not in a relationship with Guy Franklin and his mother but somehow or another I've been reduced by the the gay clan um, the gays and the clan to 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 fall in line behind them through all of these strangers so it's not like they come into my apartment and have a meal uh, when I'm home or it's not like um, they're um, they're in some relationship with me they're not I don't know these people they're Haitians like myself you know and but I'm not in a relationship with them so everything that is being done now is being done by whites who represent Franklin's right um, and and the Franklin's come in here um, in the middle of the night. You know, how? Because you American whites allow them in, right? Is Guy Franklin climbing through the window? I doubt very much that he himself is climbing through the window, but somebody else is and letting him and his mother in here to do all that they're doing. And this has followed me into the restaurant. It has followed me into Mr. Peep. It has followed me into the churches. It had even followed me into Buster, which is a restaurant that's in Tiger uh, yesterday, where, where, you know, after I watched my movie in Tiger, after praying all day long, um, I went and, and, and watched this movie. And when I got there um, to the restaurant, I was told, you know, I was told, don't go into the Mongolian restaurant by Melinda, right? She says, don't go in there because if you go in there, they're going to, um, it, it's an Asian store. They're going to take half of it and give you half and give her the other half. So I go into Buster's and as soon as I walked in, there was a big setup there. And she warned me again and she says, I don't trust these guys, you know? Um, and there were three little Guy Franklins. They were about five feet tall, right? Three, three, three white boys right there, chopped up, ready to go at it with their, with their knives and whatever forks or whatever they had and they were ready to give me the order but the the call came and says don't you know don't do it the temperature changed the spirit changed and I thought what the hell is going on here and I was all ready to eat a decent meal and so I walked out and instead went to uh, Carl's Jr. where there was the clan there waiting for me and I swear I, I couldn't believe it I was like oh my god how you know these people plan things out from here all the way through you know what I'm saying? It's like as soon as you, you mount the bus, it's like their, 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 their head starts ticking and thinking about how they're going to oppose you and what they're going to do and how they're going to hit you or, you know, after the movie, before the movie, uh, in the restaurant, after the... I mean, they think through the whole thing and the end result is supposed to be your death if you take the hit. And I'm thinking, who does that? But that's how they see themselves as running the nation. This is how they see themselves ruling over me and over you who are internationals. What the hell is Guy Franklin and his mother doing in the West Coast when they have a house in the East Coast and their families are in the East Coast? Guy and his, and his wife are in the East Coast. Um, his daughters and his sons are in the East Coast. What are they doing here in the West Coast? This is, it is my relationship with MacArthur that has brought them here. 
and it is what MacArthur has decided to do against me that has brought them here and made them do all that they have done. And of course, I'm sure they have their own motive for for uh, for standing against me. But the two combined together has made what me an enemy. Um, and so you know, and and work, nothing has changed at work. Everything is still the same. You know, I I think this month I've worked three times, three or four times. You know, out of a thirty. 30 out of 30 days I worked four times right um, I guess it's better than um, carrying that side around asking for pennies nickels dimes and quarters anything for a cup of coffee right um, I've preached uh, at least five different messages one person I think uh, gave me a $20 bill because I was <laughs> I couldn't stop preaching uh, I think it was mark chapter 8 apart from that there, there's no salvation nobody's coming into the faith nobody uh, trusts in, in Jesus um, I've you know, I, nobody's putting their faith in God. Nobody's uh, taking taking the the, the the scriptures seriously. You know, um, modern day Christianity is still modern day Christianity. Nothing has changed. And here we are, Monday morning, six eighteen. Uh, you know, and this is as far as I've gotten. You know, the seminary. Um, I just recently looked at the seminary this, to to go to the seminary, right? Western Seminary. And when I went online, and if you go all the way to the back of the seminary, um, this catalog here, it says that they they have a doctors of online masters of divinity and uh, ministry and leadership degree, right? And so I was all gun ho to, to to get internet on my um, to get internet on my uh, here in the in the studio, right? And when I go online to go look for when I go online to go look for it, what happens is that the message that they, 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 they left for me was that they belong to the Franklins, right? And the Franklins belong to the MacArthur's and the MacArthur's belong to the clan and the gay clan. So I don't know what to tell you, church. And when I'm talking to church, I'm talking to those people whom God has put his spirit in. I'm not talking to you people who go on Sunday morning um, and who, you know, who, who are whose lives are owned and controlled by um, pissed off gay white clansmen. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those of you who believe and those of you who who still profess the Christian faith and those of you who still have faith in God, right? God is not going to come out of the sky to give us a report. God is not going to come out of the sky to um, those of you who still believe in the Holy Bible, right? Um, not everybody still believes. I mean, after you've been through what I've been through, you, you, you throw it, this, you basically throw it in the trash, right? The proper response is, is, is this, right? When, when you've been through what I've been through in this country, uh, with these white people, the, the, these gay Europeans and these clan uh, Europeans and the Franklin family, this is what you do with Christianity, okay? You do this, and then you put it, you, you put it, you put it somewhere, right? Why? Because where is Jesus right when where is where is this where is this this Messiah who is this deliverer when you're sitting there being raped right where is where is this where's the Messiah where's the Messiah when you're when you're enslaved when you were you know where, where was the Messiah do I have to wait 450 years to be delivered you know what what happened you know how does this book how does this book and this guy here help me in this situation? Right. See, it's 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 people like it's 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 situations like this that puts a test to the real Christian faith. One morning I woke up, and this was on a cross, right? One morning I woke up, and they removed this, right? They removed this off of the cross, and they removed, um, and they did some other things just to let me know that they were against me, right? And I and I thought to myself, you know, how many people are doing something like this in America today? How many Africans, how, Haitians? Are enjoying this kind of maltreatment. You know, is is MacArthur waiting for me to go and jump jump out that window seven stories high to commit suicide? Is he waiting for me to to take my life because oh this Jesus of Nazareth is not coming to my rescue, right? Jesus of Nazareth is not delivering me from all the haircuts. You know, the way my hair is chopped up, chopped up in the back here. It's supposed to be long, but instead it's all chopped up in the back. You know, this Jesus of Nazareth is not coming to stop the rape, and this Jesus of Nazareth is not, you know, flying through like some Superman, um, you know, to come and swoop me off my feet and give me the deliverance that I need, you know, to assure me of my salvation and assure me of my, um, the fact that I'm his.
So what are we supposed to do? Here is another day, another report, another cry for help, another report of evil things that have been done, right? How does the, the cup, this cup here, you know, the little cup of juice, this is what Christianity has been reduced to, to a little cup of juice and a cracker. How does the, the guy that brings the juice and cracker into your life now deliver you? Is this how European Americans now are um, mocking and ridiculing Christianity, right? Is this how we're ridiculing Christianity? Is this how we're ridiculing our Creator? Right? Is do we really have a relationship with this with this God of ours? You know, um, what exactly has this Christian faith become? Here's a um, Christian News Northwest, right? And what I'm doing here is what these people are doing here, right? We're all reporting. Our situations and our circumstances right at the very beginning um, of this at the very beginning of this this thing here there's an article right here in Christian News Northwest it says two judges declined to do same-sex weddings same-sex weddings so you know am I gonna be reduced to marrying another guy another fag or am I gonna be reduced to marry a fag and uh, never marry a female because this white man has control over me and this is what he's doing against my life, right? Because you as Americans have allowed him to do this. You as Americans have taken it on yourself to violate my constitutional rights, trespass into my home and the lease that I have with this establishment, um, given permission to a Haitian family, both mother and son, to do the things that they're doing here and in your establishment, you've taken on the position of both mother and son to continue the what? To continue the evil that's being done. You know, to continue the evil that's being done. Um, and so, you know, I mean, when you go through this, this, this newspaper here, articles upon articles of ministry or... Or articles of ministry or articles of things that the church is enduring, right? Um, so one way or another, it's either they're enduring uh, pain, misery, suffering, or they are do doing ministry, right? So it's one or the other that um, the newspaper reports here. Um, you know, speaking engagements and that sort of thing. But, you know, I, I tell you the truth, um, here, here's here's what it says wife says imprisoned pastor is is worsening um, you know pastors are, are jailed you see it says wife says imprisoned pastor worsening so we who are in the Christian faith you know we are still enduring um, the misery of being Christians so it's not something that is just personal to Kevin Duclaron but there are others you know there are others that are there are other Christians that are being dealt with right um, there are other people who are suffering as a result of you know being Christians and um, and dealing with um, Christianity today you know this is what we are enduring all over the globe uh, why I'm not exactly sure why um, because people people lack people have a lack of faith they don't believe in God they don't um, you know, they don't have a relationship with this God of ours, right? People are enduring um, miserable situations and miserable circumstances. Um, there was an article in here about an Asian um, child who basically lost his entire family, right? And he came to the United States and um, he came to the United States and uh, completely his life has changed, but he had to lose everything in order for him to to gain this this world of ours and you know and, and what broke my heart is that he's not coming into a country that loves God into a country that loves Christ he's coming it's like he's, he's walked into the middle of a trap where you know he's gonna get hit hard when this situation with white with, with, with the English Americans catches up to him it's like people come here from from foreign countries and they don't have a clue right they don't have a clue what um, what internationals and Christians are dealing with, what African Americans and Native Americans are dealing with. There is an evil spirit that's in the white man 
and the white woman, you know, apart from all the pornography, um, you can only go pornographic for so long. You can only go pornographic for so long before you, you start pulling your hair out and going, this is bullshit, man. What is this thing? You know, what is this thing that is inside of these people that makes them do what they do against us internationals? What is this? Um, you know, it, in, at the end of this week here, we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. You know, and a lot of people out there, um, you know, they're not going to have anywhere to go. You know, I don't have family to go to. Um, and so I'll be sitting here, you know, um, you know, by myself again another year because I couldn't take on a believing wife. I couldn't join a believing church. I couldn't fellowship. And so to those of you that are out there and who knows my videos and who understand that um, this is part of this is part of what life is dishing out to us in this generation, you know, don't be too quick to extinguish the position of God out of your life because that may be the only thing that keeps you going um, you know don't 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 give up on on Christ yet you know we're still alive we're still living we're still breathing we still have life we still have a pulse right and so for as long as we have a pulse you know give God a chance give God a chance to be God those people who are projecting themselves as authorities and, and challenging my authority, your authority, my freedom, your freedom, my liberty and your liberty, um, you know, those people are dealing with their own hearts. They're dealing with their money. They're dealing with their pride. They're dealing with their arrogance and their own issues. They're dealing with their own lack of faith. If somebody had faith in God, would they really do something like this? No. Would they really climb through a window and trespass? No. This is how they're giving you their information. They're letting you know that, you know, there's something wrong with us. You know, perhaps, you know, whether they're they're climbing in your bed to defile it or they're they're forcing you to engage the immorality outside of the home or the immorality in the home, immorality outside of the home, and you know, they're going as far as they're going to do this sort of thing. It's 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 sort of like it's a red light saying, We're in trouble and we need help and look at what we're doing, look at how we're living. You know, something is wrong with us for doing this, you know, in the house or outside of the house. You know, sometimes people can't come to you with and say to you, look, I'm in trouble this way. And this is what I'm being made to do or having to do in order for me to survive and you to survive. And it's like in the privateness of their own hearts, there's got to be something, some, someone else there or another person there going, what am I doing, you know? Why, why am I doing this to this guy? You know, what have I done? You know, there, 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 there comes a time when you come to the realization that I can't keep living like this. I can't keep doing this. This is embarrassing. My family, my family name, my family, uh, whatever. You know, so there's another side where, you know, even the evil, even the pe evil people, um, you know, you know, you know, they're, they're, I want to show you something, you know, real quick. There, there comes a point, you know, you've ever seen... You ever seen uh, as I, as I was talking to you, um, I saw this book, um, and this 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 book here, unhappy gays. This this book here, you know. Sometimes people, you know, even though you see them in parades, you know, and they're doing all the you know they're all flighty and stuff, but there's a there's a, there comes a times when they're unhappy, you know, and there comes a point where they 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 suffer for the sins that they commit. You know, um, and I I just want to remind you, and um, that there comes a point where these people, there's another side to to some of the evil things that they're doing. You know, there's another side where there is no there is no salvation on their part, right? There is no salvation in here, in their soul. Their soul is not saved, and they're not born again. And they come to that realization that something. Is wrong with us for doing what we're doing to this man and so I'm not exactly sure what I'm saying but as I'm talking to you I'm, I'm thinking you know there's got to come a point where you you realize I have to stop this this is not working it didn't go in the direction that I wanted. it didn't happen the way that I thought it was gonna happen um, we came out on this guy we gave him the information but he didn't change his course right I mean what is the Christian faith waiting for me to do right that they themselves have not done who are the name brand Christians in your in your local neighborhood right what makes them name brand 
what makes them the people that they are the books that they write the sermons that they preach the people that they've raised from the dead what the sicknesses who you know how many demons do you get cast out of a person out of the people in the in the in the community today right do we go around casting out demons I don't know anybody that casts out demons right I don't know anybody that heals the sick unless they go to a hospital right and so what is the what is the church waiting for um, what is this community of sinners waiting for right and can we just put aside our faith do, do we just throw away the scriptures because God didn't come running you know to our, to the rescue like the firemen come and they put their ladder there and then they climb up and you know so I mean I still have my members and I'm still walking and talking right but it's annoying you know to know that someone has the liberty to chop off your hair and sexually assault you and prod you to go to a store that you don't that you detest and you don't want anything to do with you know and, and you know this sort of thing what do you do right what do you do you're getting older every single day and, and before you know it you got gray hairs growing on your head your education comes to a stop your relationship with with people come to a stop um, and you can't do anything you just you know you can't even go to a worship service can't even go to a worship service because you're looking at these people and going they're a bunch of hypocrites you know that she's on the intercom you know she's coming into my home right you know she's hiding in the background and those are her representatives right and there goes Gabriel on the stage right and there goes Gabriel as the manager and there goes Gabriel as the you know and, and, and everywhere you go there's a there's a Gabriel representative and you wonder why 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 am I having to live this way? What are what are the American people, you know, what are you as Americans getting out of me living this way? What did you get out of doing this to me for the last 18, 16, 18 years? Right? Removing me off of Grace Community Church property now that <laughs> this thing has become what it is. What did you get out of it? What what did you master seminary get out of this? What did you Grace Community Church get out of this? What, what did you, John, and, and Patricia and Melinda get out of this? What did you, Franklin, get out of it? I mean, all of this, you know, me going into your fag stores or, or you coming in and taking sex. What did you get out of it? How could, how could this situation give you any kind of peace? How could it make you happy? I mean, this is about the most wicked thing that, you know, you could have done. How, how does this make you happy? How does this help you in your own Christianity? Right? How does this help you in your own faith? What you've done here in this apartment on that bed and what you've done out there through the community in every single one of these establishments, how did that help you in your relationship with God and in your relationship with Christ? Huh? How did that help you? How did that help you with, with God and His Word and your relationship with Christ by faith? All of this in and out, in and out, in and out of my home. All of this, you know, insults upon insults in every single establishment, sexual assaults, insults, me engaging in with people and places that I ought not to have been. Or you coming in here and doing what you do. How does this help you? How, how did all of that help you in your in your faith with God? The faith that you have, you have as your own conviction. How can this be a manifestation of your convictions in God? Or there is no convictions, right? You and you and you and God go in opposite directions. Right? You and God go in opposite directions. Right? There is no God in the in your world. It's just you and these facts, right? And your level of communication, right? In opposite directions. God goes this way. You go this way. Right? I don't know. I just felt like I needed to um, say something this morning on account of the fact that all of this has happened and um, continues to happen, right? And I can't put an end to it. I can't get my work life back, my church life back, my family, my mother. I don't know if she's alive or dead, right? I don't know if she's alive or dead. Um, now I, I look for a man that looked like a woman that looked like my mother. Now I don't even call my mother on the phone. And, and it's not, and it's either in the gay context or it's in the, some, somewhere in, a, in an apartment complex as a manager or I, I have no idea what happened to my friends and family 
right? What, what is this? I mean, that's why I'm saying, are you getting it? Are you getting what you wanted out of this? Is this what you wanted? Is this the life you wanted me to live? Is this is this how you is, did you get what you wanted when you when you masterminded this, MacArthur? Did you was this was this it? This is what this is. This was your big plan. This is this is how you led masters. How many other students are you doing this to? Or am I the only target? Anyway, I'm gonna let you go this morning, and uh, I have to finish making my bed here, and uh, I gotta take a shower and and go to labor ready and see if I can get a job, make some, make 30, 40 bucks. I don't know, you know. Um, some other stuff happened, but I don't think it's needed for me to repeat it. You know, what's the point? You know, it's it's pointless to to give you all the details and with no resolution, right? There's no way to resolve any of it. Unless you, you, you remove sin out of people and sin is not going anywhere. Sin remains. Right? Even after we're dead and gone, sin will remain. Right? I don't know who was in this apartment before I came in. And I'm sure there are testimonies. You know, if apartments could speak, imagine some of the things that it would disclose about this American country. If houses could speak, can you imagine the information, the, the things that take place behind closed doors? Right? Evil and sinful things. As I'm talking, I can hear the American women and Gabriel on the intercom. You know, they came in here last night. You know, had a feast with my cock. I apologize for those all I offend using that word cock, but you have to understand, I'm all the way out. I can't be out, and I can't be in. I'm about as far out as I can be. And uh, perhaps in the future, you know, if you remember me, remember me in your prayers that God would deliver me. Um, from this situation and remember that I'm still out here um, by myself in the, you know away from the body of Christ you know those of you who, who still um, consider me a brother you know pray that God would deliver me pray that God would remove me out of this situation and, and um, that he would be merciful toward me you know I'm not like Ezekiel I'm not like Elijah you know where I pray and fire comes down out of heaven you know and I'm not like Elisha where um where i say where is the god of it of, of of elijah right and then he comes to my rescue um i've tried that but the lord says no you know just like he said no to paul who says that i am uh you know paul was suffering with um with demons and, and uh, that was buffeting him and and when he asked god to remove it and god says no my grace is sufficient for you so I'm not exactly sure what the Lord is doing here, right? He didn't come knocking on my door, and he didn't appear to me or send angels. But it doesn't mean, you got to understand, there is a creation. There's an entire, there's an entire globe that God is running. We don't give up on, on God and his word just because we're not being delivered from sexual immorality or somebody trespassing into our homes or we're being hit in the world. This is the world. This is the world that he's running. This God of ours is running this globe. He's got an entire globe to deal with. He's got a lot of prayers to answer. He's got a lot of people to care for. So it's not just a one relationship. As I'm talking to you right now, he's bringing up the sun, right? The light of the world is, is coming up right the sun is is shining it is what 6 41 in the morning we've been talking to for 43 minutes here so you know it's not like you don't just give up on god you know you don't just give up on god because that that's a lot of human beings on this planet you know that's a lot of planet to run a lot of people's lives a lot of breathing a lot of people um entering into the world which is called birth leaving the world which is called death and of course he's got to do something with the body right and he's got the body gets buried and what does he do with the spirit and the soul so as he's bringing them in right pregnant women giving birth and and taking them out people that are being declared dead and and we have to bury them have a funeral their spirit up, ascend up to heaven those who are saved from this point of view and some descend to hades those who are not saved and enduring um, the flames of hell. So God is not just dealing with Kevin here. He's dealing with you and he's dealing with a lot of other people. Millions and millions and millions and millions and probably billions of people. 
right? So we don't just give up on God because he didn't come like Superman and, you know, swooping through and, hello, Kevin. Hello. That's why it's called faith, right? Faith. Faith in the God that's running this globe. Right? Where, where do you live here? Right? Now imagine all the people in your neighborhood, right? Asking God for help. All the people of Africa asking God for help. All the people of South America asking God for help. All the people of the United States asking God for help. All the people of Europe and Russia and Asia ask, and, and, and Israel asking God for help. Praying to this God of us. That's a lot of answered prayer, isn't it? That's a lot of answered prayer. Not that he can't do it, but, you know, just keep that in mind. When you're going through what you're going through. The evil, even the evil ones, feel that they're doing evil, and it's like I need to do, I need to hit you because you didn't give me this respect. Sometimes you gotta say, you know what? You don't get any respect. You need to give God His respect. You know, bring God into the situation and say, you know what? Your problem is you have no faith in God. You don't know God. If you knew God, you wouldn't be doing these things to me. If you had a relationship, with God, right? You wouldn't be treating me this way. If you knew the Almighty, you wouldn't be taking sex from me or prodding me to go into a gay store, you know, and threatening my life and hitting me and doing whatever it is it is. If you knew the living God who was running the earth, you wouldn't be my enemy, right? You would be my brother. You'd be my sister. You would be my friend. But because you don't know God, that's the reason why you are the way you are, because you are self-centered, not God-centered. You are self-centered and want everybody in the world to serve you and to represent you. And because you're self-centered, you think that the world owes you something. When in the reality is, the world, it is God-centered. And it is us who owe Him allegiance. We owe Him respect. We owe Him love. I want to read you a passage of Scripture. One passage of Scripture. And um, this passage is coming from Timothy. And as I'm talking to you, 2 Timothy says this, and I won't hold you any longer, but give me a second here. I think this is an important passage of scripture. It says, no soldier, right? it says here in 2 Timothy 2, it says here, it says, uh, it says, no soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. No soldier in active service, right? No soldier in active service um, entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life. You know the affairs that go on out here? Christians are called to be soldiers. And as soldiers, we don't get entangled in the sins and affairs of this life. Why? Because we, we serve a living Savior because of Him. This is who enlists us as his soldiers. This is the, the commander, right, of, of our army. You ever heard of the Salvation Army? Okay, we are the Salvation Army. We are the people who go out there to save people from their sin. So besides the American way of life, there is another life, right? God, remember, called the Jews out of, out of where? Out of bondage. And what did he give them? He gave them the law and the covenant. He led them out of Israel, out of Egypt, to go and to live a whole new way of life, right? We were called to live a new life outside of the life that we initially have been given, you know? And that's what God is doing here and now. So if you're, in, if you're one of those people who offends others with, with, the ex, with your external beauty, or you're one of those people who are dominant and you feel that the world owes you something, the world owes you money, the world owes you sex, the world owes you, they owe me because of how beautiful I am, they owe me because of my fame, and they owe me because of my father's father and mother and ten generations, they owe me because I sent for you, I did this for you, I did that for you, and you owe me now, you owe me sex, you owe me submission, you owe me subjugation, you owe me slavery, you owe me. We don't owe you anything. God don't even owe you life. How about we start with that? God don't owe you a body. God don't owe you time. God don't owe you shit. Pardon my French, but I have to say it for some of you that are out there. God don't owe you shit. God don't owe you sex. God, God don't owe you a beautiful wife. 
beautiful children, full-time job, good health. God don't owe you anything. But when he gives it to you, it's out of the kindness of his heart. Right? God will supply all your needs when he's ready to. And so as a Christian who's suffering, I want to remind you there's another side. There's another side where we have to yield to God and his son. Yield to his message of salvation. You know, we could take that bold message that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I, I, I want, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take the sex, right? Or I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna, to all the men, women, children, prostitutes, lesbians, homosexuals, fornicators, adulterers, whoever, right? I'm gonna do whatever I want to do, smoke that reefer, do a cigarette, drink that booze, right? So there's a side of us where we're just gonna. You know, we're going to live it up, right? But there's another side of us where we have to humble ourselves, right? Because we're not running this. He is, according to his word. He's the one running. And so, I tell you this and I remind you, as lovingly as I can, you know, be careful, you're messing with the living God. 